All right, relays. That's what we're going to do today. Uh, this video is going to be for both year nine and then maybe year eleven, and also a little bit of year twelve A level as well. So, um, if you're year nine, I'll I'll tell you, I'll sort of tell you when to stop listening because it gets a little bit dull after that. But year twelve, you got to listen all the way till the end. Sorry about that. So, going to look at what a relay is, and these are your aims for today. Yes, this is like a proper lesson. Understand what they do, uh, be able to name it and all the different parts that make it up. You need to know why they're used as well, that's kind of important, like what's the point in them. And uh, how to label all the different legs on one as well. So you've got these different connections here called coil, common, normally closed, normally open. You should be able to spot them quite easily once you've seen this once through. So, this is how I started off the lesson. What makes a relay race different to a normal sprint race? Well, you all know the answer to that one. Um, in a relay, you pass something on, normally a baton. You give it to the next guy running, and you pass it along. And that's kind of what a relay does, but with electronics. So the idea is um, you can have one circuit passing on an instruction to another circuit. Or in real simple terms, uh, you can have one circuit switching on another. So I'll show you that probably we'll come back to this diagram, it's probably just quicker to show you what's going on with a picture here or an animation in a circuit. So this is a simple relay circuit, this little bit here, that's our relay. And I've got one circuit on the left which is running at 5 volts with a switch and another circuit over here which is running at 24 volts with a motor. Now remember they're a circuit because it forms a loop like a track, back to our racetrack analogy. A circuit is a path that joins back round to itself, so here's one path, here's another path. And what the relay allows us to do is have this circuit on the left control that one on the right. So if I press play here, I'll explain what's going on in a minute, but if I turn this switch on here, you'll see a switch flicked across there, and then this motor on the circuit on the right starts turning. But there's no electrical connection between the two. Uh, the way they are connected is with magnets, and that's what this dodgy little animation is going to try and show you here so that's kind of what a relay looks like in real life they're normally about a couple of centimeters tall little box sometimes transparent sometimes not and inside they've got all of this gubbins like this and they're really quite simple they're basically magnets now what you've got here this is the most important bit that's that's called a coil and it's a coil of wire like it sounds wrapped around a piece of iron and if you've done real basic science, you should have seen this in physics already, if you put ele an electrical current into a coil around a bit of iron, it generates a magnetic field. And what that magnetic field does is, as you know, magnets attract. So it does the following. As soon as you put energy into these two legs here, as in round the coil and out again, you create a magnetic field and it pulls this thing here down. And as you see from my rather dodgy PowerPoint animation, as it pulls this end down, because there's a pivot here, this end pushes up and joins those connections together. So if you had another circuit hooked up to these two legs, you've made a switch here that's activated by a magnet. So you've got one circuit on the left controlling another on the right only through magnetism. Um, to show you it a bit more clearly, this is the same thing but just done again as another world-class graphic. Uh, thank you very much. When we press the button on the left, we complete a path and we send energy into the coil. The coil creates a magnetic field, it's going to pull that down and it's going to join that to that. If we join this to here, we make another path and that bulb will light. So I've got the circuit on the left turning on the circuit on the right. So here you go, here you go. How sick is that? The amazing animation skills of PowerPoint. There you go, I bet you're impressed, aren't you? Yep. Right. So that's what's going on in the relay, and you might be thinking, well, that's very nice, but you've got one battery on the left turning on another circuit with another battery and a bulb on the right. What is the point? Why don't you just put the bulb over here and forget about the relay altogether? Well, that's great, but imagine this was a very, very high voltage bulb, and it's powered off the mains, so 240 volts if you live in the UK. And that's a pretty dangerous voltage. It's not something you want to be touching directly, but say you wanted to turn that high voltage lamp on with a very low voltage switch on the left well that's what we've got here 
you can have this low voltage circuit turning on that very high voltage circuit on the right with absolutely no danger of electrocution and imminent death because the two of them are separated by nothing more than magnetism Okay, you're letting the magnet do all the dangerous work and that keeps you totally separate right you can see that here again in the circuit if I just turn it off again if I look at current flow current is flowing all the way to here when I press the switch it flows into the coil what you can't see in circuit wizard is that coil making a magnet which has pulled that across and that has completed the circuit in this half again I can make that a fake 240 volts doesn't matter I can have this 5 volt circuit turning on a very powerful high voltage circuit and that's kind of the whole point of a relay um, the only other thing you need to know if you're in year 9 is what I'm going to show you now you've um, what you've noticed on this diagram uh, sorry here we go is that we've been wiring our other circuit the one we're trying to turn up uh, or the one we're trying to turn on up to these two legs here which are called normally open and common and when we push the button I pull this down and I join common to normally open and make a circuit if you look at this next circuit you might not notice the subtle change I'll just show you here ignore the magnet look at the wires what I've done is I've moved one of the wires from normally open to normally closed and you'll see now the bulb is on already even before I push the switch and made the connection here with the magnet the bulb is lit up that's just trying to explain to you the difference between normally closed and normally open um, there you go when I push the button here this closes and it actually breaks the connection so this circuit is off until you activate the circuit on the left and which top point it turns on the next circuit along I know it doesn't look much different but the wires have moved is on until you push the button and then it turns off so don't worry if that's too confusing just remember the names of these legs uh, the reason you've got that is sometimes you actually want to turn something off with a relay rather than turn it on and vice versa so they normally come with three connections on one side of them to give you that option to be able to turn on or to turn off so what's the point in them uh, this is what I'd have got you to do in the lesson have a chat with your neighbor why do you think we need them well we've said one reason mainly is safety you can turn on something dangerous from something safe so a low voltage circuit can control a high voltage one um, the best way to think of why you need them is just think of everyday objects that use them so you might remember the old school televisions with a massive back on them not the lovely flat screens but the old school massive ones uh, whenever you turn them on with the remote control or the button on the front you normally hear that kind of clicking noise well that little click is this it's the relay clicking together and the reason you have that is your little remote control circuit the infrared bit is very low voltage but it's got to turn on that massive cathode ray tube giant enormous high voltage dangerous electric bit of the television so the two are connected with a relay uh, whenever you turn on the indicators in your car you'll hear that kind of click 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 that's just a relay clicking on and off automatically obviously but uh, clicking on and off to allow the very simple low power switch inside the car up on the dashboard to activate all four high power bulbs that are outside around the car so there's loads of them in cars, they turn on the headlights, they do the central locking, they do the electric windows, um, various things in the engine, but that's really why you've got them, for safety and kind of to basically separate two different circuits. So you'd need to think about what items around the home might have them, I've given you a few suggestions already. Um, the only other thing you'll need to do for your homework if you're in year 9 is be able to label the diagram and name it. Now, naming a relay is really easy. If you see this picture, you name it based on the switch that's drawn on it. So you should know from previous lessons, this is what we'd call a single pole double throw switch. It's got one pole, the bit that moves, and two positions, so double positions, double throw. So this is a single pole double throw relay, easy. And you label it like so. These two connections are the coil. This is where you put your circuit on the left or your controlling circuit on and on the right you've got the common leg normally open and normally closed uh, the names here sound a bit confusing but it's pretty obvious when you think about it common is called common
because it goes between both of them, it's common to either of them. And normally closed, well, looking at the picture of it here, this connection is closed, it's, it's joined. And looking at it at the moment, this one's open, hence normally closed and normally open. This is the same thing, but you should recognise this switch would be called double pole, because you've got two poles, and each pole's got double throw, so double pole, double throw, relay. That's it. And you label it exactly the same, it's just you call it common A, normally closed A, normally open A, common B, normally closed B, normally open B. There we go. Easy. Alright, that's your homework sheet. You can label this, you can go back through the video and label all the parts of that, label all of these, and then I want you to explain how that circuit there is working, which I've already shown you previously. Um, that will do if you're in year 9. So if you're in year 9, you can stop listening now. Uh, if you're in year 12, tough luck. You're going to have to listen some more because you're going to learn some even more fascinating facts about relays in just a minute because I'm going to pause it and make a cup of tea. But I'll be right back. But it won't look like I was back, but I will be. So yeah, I'm back. Hi. Right, year 12, you've got to learn a couple more circuits and they are still based on relays, hopefully you understand what a relay does, but these are common ones that I recommend you've kind of got in your mind for the exam. So the examiners want you, know, want you to know a way of reversing a motor direction, so I can show you how to do that with a double pole, double throw relay. And the examiners also want you to know a way of making a latch other than using another component like a thigh wrister. And you can use a double pole, double pole, blah 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 relay to do that as well. Um, and that's what I'm going to show you with these two simple circuits. So this is the relay motor reversing circuit and I'll explain a little bit about what's going on here. We've got a light dependent resistor and a variable resistor. Together they form a thing that you should know by now. When you see a resistor on a resistor that's called a potential divider as in a voltage divider. And what happens here is as I change light levels I get a changing voltage arriving to this transistor here, just to prove that for you. Ignore what's going on on the right at the moment, just look at what's happening on the left. Stick a voltmeter on there. Right, so remember I said this is called a voltage divider, potential divider. You'll see at the moment 747 millivolts. As I make it darker, the voltage is going lower. As I make it lighter, the voltage is going up. Uh, I can have that more obvious by changing this variable resistor here. There we go. Okay, so I'm getting a changing voltage. Right. Now, anyway, at some point when that voltage gets high enough, it turns on this transistor, which allows current to flow through the coil, through the transistor. You can see that here if I look at current flow. In light, I've got current flowing because the transistor's turned on in darkness, no current flowing. Anyway, you might be happy already with what's going on there. If you are, don't worry about it. All I wanted to show you is that if you hook a, re a double pole, double throw relay up like this, you can use it to change the direction or of rotation of a motor. So in the dark position, the relay's turned off and current is flowing this way, round. It's going into the left-hand side of the motor and, exit it and exiting out of the right and returning to the battery like that. When I put it in lightness, put it in light, sorry, um, I'm now directing, by the way I've wired it up, I'm directing the current into the right hand side of the motor and it's exiting out the left. Now if you've ever picked up a motor and stuck the two connections on a battery, depending which way round you put them on the battery, you'll get a different uh, direction of rotation. And that's all the relay's doing, it's just allowing us to reverse it. Okay. Now I might have mentioned this one in the lesson, this would be, you could use this as the basis for a line following robot. Um, if you put two of these, this circuit times two, pointing down at the floor, so you have your two light sensors pointing at the floor, um, those light sensors will reflect light back off the floor, and if there's a black line painted on the floor, then um, if you imagine if both of them are detecting white, as in they're either side of the line, then both motors will turn in the same direction, pulling the robot forward. If it happens to stray over the line, 
as in one of the light sensors is reading dark and then one of the other one is reading light then the motors will turn in opposite directions and you'll get a turning effect just to give you an idea of that if we have a quick look on YouTube I don't know how this will play because I'm videoing a video um, this kind of thing here is doing that this is what I mean by a line following robot I don't know how well this is going to animate but you'll probably get the idea of it you can always look up this yourself so two light sensors pointing down right brilliant when they pick up the difference between the floor and the black line each of these motors is either going forwards or slightly reversing to create that kind of turning effect okay and you could actually use this not just for a mildly amusing toy but this could become a kind of automatic system in a factory you could have a a buggy that follows its own way around a warehouse picking up goods and delivering them where they need to go without anyone having to drive it so there you go you've got line following robot um, motor reversing circuit very useful uh, you'll find this in other systems and control problems if you had you might remember that bollard question where you had to make a bollard raise up and down for a little bit of adaption you could use this motor attached to a rack and pinion to move a mechanism up and then down. So perhaps this could be one of those attached to a car parking barrier that goes down at night time to stop cars going onto the high street or up or whatever the opposite sorry during the day so that traffic can flow through. Alright so there's the motor reversing circuit. Uh, the only other one you want to look at is using a double pole double three double throw and it's late relay as a latch which is what's going on here what I'm using this for is a if you remember a latch in electronics is a device that locks on even when the thing that activated it is no longer active so what I've got here this is a photo transistor as in a light sensing transistor this is an LED shining infrared light on it so this is what we'd know as an infrared beam that's what we call it in school um, if you were to walk through this beam you block the light getting to this transistor and the transistor switches off when that transistor turns off it gets really high resistance therefore the base of the transistor gets biased this way and gets a high signal going to it and it gets turned on when this transistor turns on current can flow through it this relay activates and turns the bulb on um, what actually happens is it turns the bulb on with this half of the double pole throw relay well, I can't even speak, double pole, double throw relay circuit um, but it also turns on a permanent bypass around the transistor and you'll see what I mean here, it, it latches so, right, let's look at current flow I've got no voltage getting to my transistor at the moment because I've got light shining on my infrared beam when I walk through the beam as my burglar I send a very small high current to the transistor, it turns on this circuit is now active, lighting up my bulb, you could replace this with a siren and even if my thief, burglar, nasty no-do-gooder, uh, walks out of the beam the transistor's turned off now but you'll see current can still flow through the coil because I've built a short circuit around the transistor that's how I've created a latching effect, I've given my coil another way to get back to earth without having to go through the transistor. The only way to unlatch this circuit now is to cut the power to it entirely. If I cut the power, the spring in the relay pops back. There we go, all fixed. If you replace that switch there with a key switch, one that you had to put a key in and turn, then you've made this a kind of secure alarm system. So you break, burglar breaks the beam. Even if they step out of the beam, the siren or alarm, or in this case a bulb, stays on. The only way to disarm it is to put the key in and deactivate it so you've got a double pole double throw relay being used as a latch there and you've got the motor reversing circuit there we go and obviously the simple relay there you go right that's uh, more than you ever cared to know about relays I bet you're a lot happier for knowing this aren't you <laughs>